It's been another painful weekend in the coronavirus pandemic. The death toll is now more than 22,000 nationwide. That's more than 4,000 have died since just Friday. President Trump has issued federal disaster declarations for all 50 states, and that's a first in U.S. history. But seven states still do not have stay-at-home orders. In the meantime, Dr. Anthony Fauci, a reassuring voice for many Americans during this crisis, may now be in trouble with the president for apparently disagreeing with him in public. David Begno is near the naval ship Comfort in New York, still the hardest hit city in America. David, what is happening there before we talk about Dr. Fauci? Gail, if the trend continues, the death toll here in New York State could surpass 10,000 today. 10,000 people killed in just the last month due to the coronavirus. But there is some good news. The stay-at-home order appears to be working, and I'm talking dramatically. There's a downward trend with the data from hospitalizations, ICU admissions, and people needing to be placed on a ventilator. But there are still 18,000 people across the state of New York in the hospital this morning battling coronavirus. Things are just totally crazy right now. There are now more than 100,000 reported COVID cases in New York City. There's also a serious shortage of swabs used to test for the coronavirus. That's according to the city's health department, which is now telling medical providers only test hospitalized patients in order to preserve resources. Ever since coronavirus broke out four to six weeks ago, um, it's, been a, it's been a struggle in terms of supply chain. Christopher Zavala is with Northwell Health. They are the largest health care provider in New York State. This week, we have enough supply to get us through at least at least a week. The rate of hospitalizations in New York seems to have stabilized when you look at the last five days, with roughly 18,000 COVID patients statewide. Saturday, only 53 new COVID patients were admitted to New York hospitals. We haven't seen a decrease in the patients just yet. We've had a pretty good uptick in the, in the patients that we've re received over the past couple of days. For the past two days, about 80, 85 patients per day. Lieutenant General Laura Richardson is talking about the Javits Center in Manhattan, which has been converted into a field hospital and is far busier now than it was even last week. Meanwhile, the increase in reported cases and deaths in the state of Michigan was lower Sunday after six straight days of more than 100 deaths per day. Cindy Engelhardt just returned to work as a nurse in Detroit after she recovered from the coronavirus. I have a lot of survivor's guilt, like a lot of, like, why wasn't I the nurse that was taken? Flint resident Sandy Brown, who lost her husband to coronavirus and her son three days later, buried them in a service where the mourners had to stay in their cars as she stood alone at the grave. In New Jersey, Jared Lovos died last Friday. Jared was bigger than life. Jared shined hotter than the sun. His girlfriend, Jocelyn Jimenez, says he had no underlying conditions and fought COVID for 16 days, 10 of those on a ventilator. He was 27 years old. They kept saying he's strong, he's young. This virus is very deceiving. Someone so healthy, someone so full of life. And then I got a call on Friday saying that his heart stopped. And my heart literally stopped. Jocelyn says before they intubated Jared, she was able to FaceTime him. And they said, I love you to each other before Jared was placed on a ventilator. Jocelyn says Jared was treated with the anti-malarial drug hydroxychloroquine. His mother, stepfather, and brother all tested positive for the virus, but Tony, all three of them are okay this morning. Yeah, there is no wonder drug yet. David, beg no for us. David, thank you very much.